Hi guys, welcome to the channel. After two years of being submerged under more than 100 feet of water, Microsoft has pulled its container-sized data center from the bottom of the North Sea, discovering that servers on its underwater data center were eight times more reliable than those on land. And in today's video, we will talk about Microsoft's underwater data centers. Without further ado, let's begin. The goal of Microsoft's Project Natic was to test and monitor the performance, reliability, and failover of the purpose-built underwater data center, dubbed the Northern Isles. The underwater data center contained 12 racks, 864 servers with FPGA acceleration, and 27.5 petabytes of storage. It was sent 117 feet into the sea off Scotland's Orkney Island in spring 2018. The result was a success as the servers in the underwater data center showed a failure rate of one-eighth that of land-based data centers, according to Microsoft. Has prompted Microsoft to look into leveraging underwater data centers to power the full suite of Microsoft Azure cloud services. Project Natic In 2018, Microsoft tethered it to land by power lines and fiber optic cables and deliberately sank it. For the next two years, under 117 meters of seawater, 12 racks of IT equipment inside continued to run, processing workloads for the aptly named Microsoft Azure. The underwater data center was the latest experiment in Project Natic, an ongoing effort to run servers unattended, to find whether the cloud can work underwater. In July 2020, it was time to retrieve the capsule and assess the results. Natic began in 2013, when Microsoft researcher Sean James, previously a U.S. Navy submariner, wrote a paper proposing underwater data centers. In 2014, the company decided to do it for real and put together the Natic team under Ben Cutler. In 2015, Cutler's team took the plunge, sealing a single rack of servers in a vessel and sinking it in shallow water off the coast of California. The micro data center ran reliably for three months before it was achieved for assessment. That was proof of concept. Northern Isles SSDC002 would be the real test. It had 864 servers and 27.6 petabytes of storage in a cylinder filled with unreactive nitrogen gas. It used a grand total of 240 kilowatts of power, working out to some 20 kilowatts per rack. The system is designed to do up to 900 watts per unit and has 42 unit racks so we can manage more than 30 kilowatts per rack," Cutler told DCD. The system worked and it beat expectations. Cutler says SSDC002 didn't just equal land-based equivalents. In some respects, it outperformed them. Microsoft said that the hardware which spent two years in the underwater data center was eight times more reliable than equivalent servers running on land. Cutler gave DCD some more details about that figure. Why did the seaborne servers do better than those on land? How was the comparison made? And what are the implications for the future? Basically, this data center is designed to use off-the-shelf IT equipment. It's not even brand new equipment. The servers had been retired from a data center. Seaborne reliability. There was nothing special about the kit in the box, Cutler explained. Basically, this data center is designed to use off-the-shelf IT equipment. It's not even brand new equipment. The servers have been retired from a data center. We did put in brand new SSDs for boot drives and brand new hard drives for data. That's literally standard off-the-shelf equipment. Cutler's team took a batch of nearly 1,000 servers that had been retired from a data center. We split them between the land and the water and ran the same workload in both places. 855 of those servers went into the Northern Isles canister and worked unattended underwater for 25 months and eight days. The remaining 135 servers toiled in a couple of racks of a northern data center alongside hardware running Microsoft's Azure Cloud. Internal Microsoft projects sent jobs which were distributed fairly between the two sets of servers. So the same thing was happening both in land and water, says Cutler. We wanted the same life experience for these servers, so just the environment is different. 
Neither group got any maintenance, he says, although there was a lot of normal data center work activity going on all around the land-based servers. If you are enjoying the video, then make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more amazing videos just like this. Environmental Impact Normal data centers maintain a steady temperature and humidity and are concerned about airflow. With a sealed container, the Natic team also had to include equipment to vary pressure. Remember your ideal gas law from school? Now if we raise the temperature, the pressure goes up. So things are a little bit different in this environment. Cooling was by an air-to-liquid heat exchanger between each pair of racks, says Cutler. Each of those heat exchangers has data center fans on it that push the air through as needed. Seawater was pulled from the outside and run through the heat exchanger and back out to the ocean. That's a big plus for Cutler. Data centers can use a lot of water for cooling, but we don't use any potable water. We're just driving seawater through and then right back out. That allows us to deploy this anywhere we want to without the need to tap into a water supply. That's important because there's a lot of places on the planet where water is the most valuable natural resource. Even right now in the United States, half the country is in drought conditions and we don't want to compete with consumers and businesses for that. The effectiveness of the cooling also means that Natix data centers can be deployed in seas from the Arctic to the equator, says Cutler. They wasted very little energy in cooling, so most of the unit's power could go to the servers, giving it a power usage effectiveness PUE, of only 1.07, a low PUE is good but did the SSDC002 affect its local environment? The water we discharge is a fraction of a degree warmer than what comes in from the ambient ocean. And it's a very small percentage of the water that's passing outside. So literally a few meters downstream, you can't measure the temperature difference anymore. Relaunch? The obvious question now is, what next? The statistical result is very strong, says Cutler. But what do you learn in terms of tangible things you can go off of and do? We know some next steps to try and do on land. Will there be more subsea facilities? Previously, Cutler has said the sea could be a haven for data centers, and he's still keen to see it happen. The environment there is anything but harsh, with cooling available for nothing, he says. And real estate is cheap. Finally, the seafloor is actually a convenient location with half the world's population living within 120 miles of the sea. Learning on land But right now, it's too soon now to say whether Microsoft will follow up SDCC002 with a bigger seabed facility. When Cutler says Microsoft has learned plenty, even if it never puts another data center underwater, we want to understand what learnings we can take from this experience and bring back to land data centers, he says. One aspect of the analysis that's going on now is to understand that and then maybe spin up some work that would be low impact and improve reliability on land. So guys, let me know down in the comments section below, what do you think about it? For more interesting content, give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more awesome content. Have a nice day, and I will see you in the next video.